All right, good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us to learn more about how you can get involved at UNCG and within the community. My name is Daisy Santiago, and I am one of the assistant directors in the Office of Intercultural Engagement. And I will be serving as your moderator uh, this evening for our panel discussion, which is made up of current students and alumni. As you know, UNCG Chance has gone virtual this year. For the past few years, UNCG UNCG Chance has been providing an immersive six day summer experience for Latinx rising high school juniors and seniors. During their time on campus, students were able to participate in a variety of experiences that gave them a glimpse of life as a UNCG student. Lost my place. They engage with a host of university professors, current students and staff to forge a network of meaningful connections both focused on academic success and personal growth. The program was created to encourage Latinx students to attend college by increasing their awareness of higher education and showing that it is well within their reach. This year, COVID-19 has caused us to pause our face-to-face -face camp experience and find a safe way to engage with the students who are seeking, seeking information about how they too can reach their goal of attending and completing college. Through technology and dedication, we have brought together our faculty, staff, students, and alumni to share with students across our state and beyond how every student can find their chance here at UNC Greensboro. With that being said, I would like to begin our discussion by having our panelists introduce themselves. We will begin with our current students, Jackie. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Jacqueline Sandoval, and I'm a Guatemalan American first generation college student and a senior majoring in public health education with a minor in Spanish. And on campus, I take on multiple leadership and mentor roles. Salerino. <laughs> Okay. Uh, my name is my name is Celerina Munoz Ramos. Uh, I'm a first generation uh, Latinx student. I'm currently a UNCG senior. I am working to get a major. Um, my major is language, literature, and cultures. I'm also getting a major in consumer apparel retail studies, and I'm working to get a minor in entrepreneurship as well. Excellent, Manny. Hey everyone, my name is Manny Valdez. I am a rising senior as well. I major in history with a teaching licensure and I identify as Mexican American. Great, Samantha. Hi everyone, my name is Samantha McCoy. I am a first generation Colombian American. I am a elementary education major with a concentration in the arts and a minor in dance. Um, on campus, I am uh, helping a lot with my sorority and I'm also involved in other clubs as well. Next, I'd like our alumni to introduce themselves, Miguel. Hi everyone, my name is Miguel Cruz Morales and I am a first generation college student. I graduated this past May from UNCG and I am an aspiring registered dietitian. I enjoy hiking, cooking and binge watching Netflix and I will be returning to UNCG this fall to complete my dietetic internship. Excellent. Jocelyn? Hola, my name is Jocelyn Munoz. I am a first generation college graduate, class of 2018 from the Bryan School of Business, where I double majored in business administration and entrepreneurship. Whenever I'm not leading the sales development at Team Pay in New York City, I am volunteering with a nonprofit I helped start called Comunidad Latina del Condado de Randolph County, or volunteering with UNCG alumni. Great, so to begin our conversation, can you tell us why UNCG is so special? Celerino. Um, for me personally, um, I find UNCG to be very special to me because it's able to provide a very inclusive environment for all of its students. The diversity in UNCG, I think personally is amazing. I have met students from many different ethnic, racial, religious, gender, cultural backgrounds. And I think um, that's really what makes us work and like connect together. Like we learn, we connect through our similarities and we also learn from our differences. 
Um, I learned so many things from around the world, from different people, like taking, like being an LLC major, in language literature's cultures major, I learned a lot about the world as well, taking different types of um, courses. And I think that really helps me expand my uh, knowledge on cultures and people around the world. Thank you. Uh, Samantha, do you wanna share with us why UNCG is so special? Um, yeah, so as soon as I stepped on campus, I felt an overwhelming positivity. The amount of resources that are provided for every student and how there's a sense of community. Nobody is left behind. Everybody is cared for. Um, and everyone wants to see you achieve your goal of seeking the higher education. And I think that's very important. Um, also, I am Latina, and with that, I wanted to be in a community that was very accepting of my ethnicity and everything that comes with that in my culture, and UNCG does just that. Great. Uh, Miguel. So UNCG is special, like Salerino said, because of how diverse and inclusive the campus can be, and I took a full advantage of that. But there is room for everyone at UNCG. And I think most importantly, you decide how you get involved on campus, which I think is very opportunistic for you because you get to put yourself in positions of growth. And that's why I think that UNCG is very special. Awesome. So for our um, next question, I wanna ask you all, um, where do you find support outside of the classroom? Jackie? Yeah, so um, I'm always turning to my mentors, my supervisors, my friends and my family for any advice. Um, and even campus resources, we have a ton and the people that work there are so incredibly helpful. So if you don't know where to turn to, there, there will be um, someone who most likely knows the answer or will at least help you po uh, point you to the right direction. So yeah. Manny, where do you find support outside of the classroom? Outside of the classroom, um, one of the biggest supports that I have on campus is my fraternity, um, Theta Delta Chi. I've held many positions in this organization, such as being president, secretary, head of recruitment. Um, these men have pushed me to be the best person I am today and are definitely one of my biggest support systems with everything that goes on in my life. I know I can always count on them and be there for me. Um, some of the other clubs that I've been a part of, this, um, like the Spartan Men's Initiative, um, is a big group of men that just, you know, strive to, strive to do a lot of things, especially within the Latino community. We have a lot of guys who go out there who volunteer for chance and then just go out of their way to do a lot of other things. Um, so I would definitely say the clubs I've been involved in and my fraternity and my family are one of the biggest supporting pieces um, here in college and as well as my mentors. Um, big shout out to Rod, Caleb, uh, Dr. Dyson, Margarita, and Katya. You guys definitely paid away for a lot of us. So that, those are my biggest support system. Excellent, thank you. And um, Jesseline, do you wanna share um, who were your supporters uh, outside of the classroom when you were attending UNCG? Yeah, so just echoing with what Manuel shared, when I was at UNCG, uh, the Latino Education Affairs Office was a huge support for me, especially, you know, Katia and Margarita, there's people that I still turn to today. Um, the Office of Intercultural Engagement was also a huge support. Um, I found a lot of resources and encouragement in that office. And of course, my mentors. It's so important to find mentors while you're at UNCG. Two of my mentors were Mr. John Chapman with the Sales Institute and Dr. Omar Ali, uh, who was, who's the Dean for the Lloyd International Honors College. So it's so important to build relationships outside the classroom. Um, those relationships are really gonna help you grow both professionally and personally. Great, thank you. So my next question is, how have you been involved as a student and how has that involvement impacted your experience at UNCG? Jackie? Yeah, um, I can list many things, but I'll just keep it short because there's not a whole lot of time. But I've been on the Spartan orientation staff. I've also been a peer academic leader. Um, and currently I am a resident advisor. Um, and I've also participated in multiple community service projects because service is um, something I value. And all of these positions and opportunities have sh shaped my like professional and personal development and just taught me the skills to be become a leader and an effective communicator and most importantly just to be empathetic and especially in times right like right now I think we can use a whole lot of empathy 
So yeah. Thank you, Celerino. Um, for me personally, um, I've really been involved thanks to the Latino Education Affairs Office. Uh, thank you to Margarita and Katia Castellon. They really pushed me to get involved around campus. Like, I'm currently working for them as a student ambassador and working for them. I help um, families, you know. Um, I talk to the students with the families. We help them through the process. Um, I have been part of panels similar to this. Um, I've been, I've gone to conferences, college fairs. I have participated like I like in chance as a mentor and coordinator. Um, I'm also really involved around campus, being part of groups. Um, I like to challenge myself, so also being a president of my own club, which is Corazón Folklorico, where we do um, mainly Mexican folklore dancing. Um, and what we what we do is just a dance group. So that planning events and stuff like that, that really challenges me, um, learning how to do teamwork. Um, it's just really working with others. Um, I just really love giving back to my community, especially when it comes to my Latino community. Anything that I can do to help, I'm always down. Awesome, thank you. And last, Manny, if you wanna answer the question. Yeah, so I spoke a little bit about my involvements already, but to name a few, I've been president of my fraternity. I'm currently the president of the Interfraternity Council. Um, like many people on this call, I've also been a chance mentor for two years. I've also been a peer academic leader for two years, and I'm currently a McNair scholar. Um, these moments have made me fall in love with UNCG over and over again. They have made me realize that all the amazing people that go to this campus through my, through my involvements, I have worked on various teams and boards. I've been connected with so many people that I have the pleasure of crossing paths with. UCG is always filled, in like my opinion, is always filled with ambitious students and you can almost like feel it in the atmosphere that students are here to do big things. Um, and especially within the Latinx community, we are all scholars, we're all leaders and you can feel that atmosphere, you can feel that energy in the atmosphere and it makes me feel very happy to be around a group of people like this and especially at a community like UNCG because everyone's always so teachable, everyone always wants to aspire to do new things and you know, the hustle and the grind of all these students and the Latinx community here is, is unmatched. It's, it's crazy to be a part of. Awesome, thank you for that. Um, why do you all feel it's important to uh, begin building a network now and how will that help you in the future? Samantha? So I think that it's very important to start building connections because we do go to college to potentially seek a job after. And we need to know that everybody around us has some sort of resources that can help us, whether it's with personal things or with even helping us achieve our goals and finding good jobs when we get out of college and having all these resources like advisors and, and things like that. Great, uh, Miguel? Yes, yeah, so learning how to network itself it can be an art and it is very important, but so are the connections that you make. And I mean, like just personally, those connections have led to opportunities that have allowed me to grow personally and professionally. But then you start to like build rapport with these people and eventually they can either become people that you know use as references for jobs or internships or whatnot. But most importantly, it's that connection, which can link you to another connection, which is the most important part about building that network and learning how to do it at a young age. Thank you. And Jocelyn, if you wanna answer the question for us. Yeah, um, so, you know, a network is your community. You know, there are people who um, are gonna encourage you. They're gonna help you find opportunities. You know, a connection with someone is more powerful than your resume or cover letter or LinkedIn page. When you build a relationship with someone, um, that opens up the doors for internship opportunities, job opportunities after you graduate. So I encourage all the students, you know, go to events outside of UNCG, connect with professionals in your field and keep in touch with them. Many professionals really wanna be there for you, whether that's through a mentorship or to be a champion for your success. So make sure to reach out. Thank you, Yaslin. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Yubi Aranda Sandoval. I am an assistant director of alumni engagement here at UNCG. So I stay in touch with our alumni network um, and bring them back home to our alma mater to plug them in into their school or into their passion. 
um, so that they can keep our legacy moving forward and most importantly, um, to connect back to our students and give back, um, whether it be you know being a mentor, whether it be giving a workshop um, session um, or monetary as well. So I'm happy to be here with you guys. And um, this question is for our alumni. Um, how have you found your way to stay connected to UNCG and why? Yasling? Yeah, so, you know, I was actually connected uh, to the alumni group actually through Juvi. So thank you so much, Juvi, for connecting me back. Um, but, you know, the main reason why I decided to stay connected and why I am is because first I wanna give back to the university that has helped open up so many doors for me. Um, and secondly, you know, I wanna work with students. I know what it's like to be a first generation college graduate. You know, I know the struggles, uh, but also the wins that come after graduation. So I always love to give back. Um, and then again, to continue to build my network. I talked about how important it is. So it's so great to go back to UNCG and connect with other alum and students. Miguel? So technically I never really left UNCG. So, I mean, staying connected was kind of easy for me. I am returning this fall as a graduate student, but I am taking this opportunity to stay connected over the summer. But I do plan to be a part of Chance in the future years, just because I feel like it is such an important program. And I feel like it does bring a lot of us, like the same people, the same culture together, and it can educate us and like other younger people on how to apply to college and how to get funding and stuff like that, which I think is very important. But um, I mean, you are one of the main reasons um, that I stay connected because you did reach out to me right after graduation and you said, you know, this is what I do for the alumni, this is how I keep them connected. So I do appreciate that. And so here I am. And so I am very thankful for this opportunity and thank you, Yubi, for this. The pleasure is mine. Thank you. Um, so why is it important to be involved in, in the community outside of UNCG after you graduate? Um, let's start with you, Megan. So for me, it was definitely about getting an internship because I do have to do 1200 hours of supervised practice before I can sit for my licensure exam. And so that piece was very crucial for my career. So being able to connect to other dietitians within the community, either through volunteering, or other type of opportunities help me build my resume in order for me to, you know, get this internship. And such opportunities weren't just within the Latinx community, but I did a lot of volunteering for the Greensboro Urban Ministry, which was basically just being able to feed the homeless and having that type of nutrition education with them, which is what really brought me to many uh, connections in the county for like nutrition education um, services and stuff. So I think that's what's really important. You get to make those connections and you can use those connections to apply them to your um, future career. As you guys have seen, service is UNCG's big motto. Service is everything to us uh, at UNCG. And these this group of students and alumni reflect that. Yaslin, please tell us why is it important to be involved in your community? Yeah, so it's so important to be involved with your community, um, you know, because you understand your community. So you understand the needs of the community. And if you have certain experiences, it's always great to give back um, and to be able to pave the road for the people that are coming after you. Um, you know, and not just be connected with your community, but also connect outside. So for example, while I was an undergrad, um, you know, I had internships that I was able to get because I went to outside networking events through the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce, the Small Business and Technology Development Center. So it's so important for students to go to these events to connect with these professionals because the simple fact that you are a student is gonna help you get access uh, to people and to places that you wouldn't have access otherwise. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, but remember that it's always great to give back to the community and the organizations that help build you up. Thank you guys. Um, one last question our alum, um, and actually you students may have a, uh, a response to this as well. Why are mentors important, um, especially our seniors, after graduating? Um, Miguel, would you like to answer that? Yes, so for me, mentors serve as two main 
roles in my life. First, they keep me in check. They know how to keep it real with you. You know, they tell you the facts, how it is. Even sometimes it's hard to face the, the real facts about maybe how your behavior is or how you're approaching certain things. But I feel that mentors will always be real with you and they keep you in check. So that's very important for me. But then second of all, I think that they also, they're there to teach you. They're there to give you connections. They're there to show you the way or maybe give you a, a different perspective on a situation that you never really thought of. But their main role is to help shape you into a future professional that you could have probably never been without their connection and their mentorship. Um, Jackie, would you like to say a couple of words on that? Yeah, um, similar to Miguel, yeah, um, I think about like my mentor as someone who is like kind of like paving the way for me, showing me the ropes, um, especially now that I'm looking into going to graduate school. I do heavily like rely on like my mentors for their advice on what to look at in a program. Um, and these are things that you'll start talking about when you're in, you're a senior or a junior, but um, it's getting like more surreal now that I'm in this position and that that is like a plan I have. And my mentor is just someone I, I just, is my go-to person. I, I go to them with any questions I have. Um, if I'm stuck on something and I need like a fresh new perspective, um, my mentor is right there to support me. And yeah. Yaslin, you talked a little bit about your mentors, uh, Dr. Ali and uh, John Chapman at the uh, SELS Institute. Tell us why it's important um, to have these. So, you know, one of the very important roles of a mentor is having someone that's going to challenge you. You know, for example, uh, with John Chapman, you know, he always challenged me and challenged me to think about my career. I actually have a career in sales because of him. Prior to connecting with him and taking his classes, it was something that I would have never considered. But just by being around him, um, it opened up a whole career path for me. And then um, with the example with Dr. Ali, he always challenged me to overcome obstacles that I didn't even know were you know, in existence. Um, as a first-generation Mexican-American, first-generation college student, um, he showed me the importance of sharing my story not only within communities that I'm comfortable with, but communities that you know I may not connect with directly, uh, because you know your story has power, and every student has a powerful story that needs to be shared. Uh, so you know, connecting to mentors is going to help you push yourself both professionally and personally. So that's why you know mentors help you grow. Thank you, guys. Um, at this time, we are going to open it up for our viewers to you know, filter some questions into our Facebook Live uh, comments. And we have a few already lined up uh, here. Uh, the question is, what do you think is most difficult, as is the most difficult aspect of campus life? Uh, Manny, would you like to tune in on that? Yeah, I think um, I'm kind of, I was kind of like switch the question around. I feel like the most difficult aspect of campus life is not not going out there and seeing all the resources that, resources that UNCG has or any other campus has to offer you. Because UNCG, there's there's so many clubs, so many resources, so many things that are literally at like everybody's fingertips. So I feel like one of the most difficult things is to not go out and explore those resources or go out and explore all the things that we have to offer. Because there's literally over a hundred clubs that anyone can go on and join. And you could join so many of these. If not, there's so many mentorships or assistantships to go out and look for. So. I think the biggest, the most difficult aspect is not trying to go out there and be engaged with your community. Um, Celerino? Um, I would say that um, I feel like getting involved can be pretty difficult for some people just because like um, that, that, that might be just the way they are, you know, they're not typically that social. Um, one of the things that I've seen as a team leader and just like um, meeting students from all types of families, um, a lot of students just tend to come to the campus for the class and then leave. And then they don't tend to get involved, you know, especially if they don't live on campus. Um, they just come for the class and go home. And that's also very, that has to do a lot with their culture as well. I mean, for me personally, that's how it was for me. Um, growing up with my parents, um, I wasn't really involved in anything through elementary to high school. 
so because my parents expected me to just go to class and then come back home you know um i wasn't really given the opportunity to get involved out of outside of um events out of like school hours so that can be a very difficult aspect just getting involved and just being able to connect um to the community as well just because some people might not be used to something like that and i mean i was not used to it at all when i came into uncg because i was extremely shy and people don't believe me um but i was really shy at first like um, i really had a hard time getting involved but margarita and katia really pushed me so much to be involved in so many things that now i'm able to do things like this and i think it's really important for um students to really really get involved especially because that's what we tell students is like if if you come to class and just do um especially you get good grades or whatever but if you don't get connected if you don't do if you don't network by the time you graduate you're going to have no connections you're going to have a really hard time probably finding a job so it's really important to get that knowledge get involved you know for referrals or just being able to experience things around campus so what i'm hearing from you is introverts prepare yourself to be uncomfortable is that correct <laughs> basically <laughs> um which is nothing wrong like Yaslin had mentioned before you know this is just an opportunity to grow and that's that's where you know the step forward is and um growth so our next question from our audience is how is unc dif different from other unc campuses uh why should someone choose uncg over these other 17 unc system campuses Sammy, would you like to answer that? Yeah, of course. So a big part of the reason why I decided to go to UNCG was because I wanted to find a home away from home. Um, I think that a lot of the schools, I mean, I'm personally transferred from another UNC school. And when I came here, I felt a lot more at home. I found a lot more resources and I found a lot more acceptance and a lot of appreciation for my culture, as well as um, the amount of resources on campus is amazing. And I think that's a big plus. So I think that's what differentiates us from other UNC system schools. Miguel, since you, you know, you were transitioning from undergrad into graduate school, why did you decide to stick to UNCG um, and, you know, you're still here? So for me, it was a lot about the support that I was getting from the department. That was one of my biggest, um, I guess, factors for me deciding to apply to UNCG again for graduate school. But it was also just because of how I got, I guess, placed into UNCG. So. I came to one of those like meetings before you even came to get to just like an open house type thing. And I remember the Spanish session that Margarita and Katia had and just how that impacted my decision because of my mom feeling more safe and more secure sending me off to campus. It just, it clicked. And so that's why I made my UNCG my home away from home and just keeping that connection with the people that I met here was very important for me. So that's why I decided to stay. Can I add on to that? Sure, go ahead. So I, I like Miguel said, for me, it, it, like the big factor was also the involvement of the people, the community, Margarita and Katia. Um, they really made me feel like, UNCG really made me feel like they wanted me here um, compared to other universities. Um, I always tell this story to oncoming students like, when I was um, applying to the university, I got accepted and everywhere, but I would only get calls to like really um, remind me of like the upcoming dates, orientation day or deadlines. But when it came to UNCG, um, for me, it really made a big difference just because the way they, they communicated with me, they really try to help me with the process. They were constantly asking me, have you done this? Have you done that? Do you need help with this? You know, and like the fact that um, Margarita and Katia not only connected with me, but they also connected with my family. That was a huge thing for me. It just, it really made a really huge difference. And honestly, the, they were a huge help to me because as a first generation student, I had no idea how to go to college. I didn't know how the money worked, um, FAFSA, application, scholarships. I had no idea. My parents know nothing about that. The day of my orientation, I went by myself because my parents don't know anything. They, they, they don't really are, they're not really fluent in English as well. So it's just, it really made a big difference for me. It really made me feel like UNCG, UNCG wanted me there. And once I actually got there, it really made a huge difference to me. Cause like, I really felt like, um, like I was in my community. Like, I felt like I was 
in a family, you know, with the events that I've been to, I've always feel really comfortable. And when I look, when I think about if I had gone to a different university that might not have a very Latino um, popu uh, population of students, I'm thinking, what would I be doing? <laughs> would I be doing all the things that I'm doing now? Probably not. So I would probably say that that's a very big thing to look for students. I would say look at the student body and look at um, how diverse they are because that can make such a big difference for your experience overall. Thank you, Celerino, for adding to that. Um, I have another question here um, for my introverts. What is your advice on networking for introverts? Um, so, Celerino, I know that you identified yourself as an introvert. Would you like to chime in? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. For me, um, I still feel like uh, like an introvert. You know, I feel like I learned how to speak, but I'm still not used to like just talking to strangers. I one of the things that for me, um, because I meet a lot of uh, students that come to the office. Um, a lot of times they're shy to talk, and um, a lot of times we're just there to answer the questions, but they tend to not ask you. So one of the things that I usually do is I give them the information without them asking, or I ask them questions just to um, kind of get them talking. So for me, that's always a strategy to like kind of get um, familiar with somebody. Um, I'll, I'll ask questions. That's usually how I do. And, you know, because like sometimes they might not really want to talk. So what I do is I'll ask them questions to figure out what they need, and that would actually and tell them what they need to know or um, anything like that. So I think also like getting involved in a club can be such a huge help. Um, being part, um, being president of my club, um, for, like I mentioned, uh, one of the things we tell our members is like, if you join us for sure, you will always come with a friend here, trust me. We're, uh, it's going into like a really nice close family. Um, and it's just like, um, you, it's like little steps, you know? You don't have to be like joining this, joining that, 5,000 things. But if you start slowly, eventually you'll be able to work it through. And even if you still consider yourself an introvert, eventually you will learn how to talk because I do like to consider myself still like as an introvert just because I'm not all over. But when I need to talk, I can do it. And I know like, even though I might be nervous in the inside, I can, I can accomplish it. Thank you, Celerino. Any of our two alumni identify as introverts or would like to give a tip on, you know, some of these how to network? So personally, I just think you just have to kind of push yourself out there and just think of like the end goal of what, you know, networking will do for you, even as an introvert. But I, what I think helped me a lot was taking a public speaking course or just like a speaking intensive course. Mm -hmm. It forces you to be uncomfortable and speak in front of other people. And it just, it really did help me on how to control myself and how to just bring it in when you're going to talk to people that you don't know. Thank you guys. Um, have another question here. It says, I am currently involved with the Appalachian State Program uh, Upward Bound. As a student, how can I apply my services from Upward Bound, such as community service and summer classes into applying being at UNCG. What student organization, oh, I'll just stop that. Um, so how can I apply my services from upward bound, such as community services and summer classes into applying or being at UNCG? Um, I will let anyone who would like to chime in that has, um, you know, service, um, some of the service background. I think, yeah, Jacqueline, you had mentioned a little bit about that. Yeah, so, um, I mean, that's amazing, one. Um, and two, I think you'll definitely find a place where you can um, like apply those skills and utilize those skills, especially in the Student Success Center. Um, they have um, what's called a TRIO program um, that provides like individualized academic skills and, instruction or like tutoring. Um, oh, I Upward Bound is a TRIO program. Yes, so you are familiar with TRIO, but you will find that at UNCG. So, um, and the people there are wonderful. I actually uh, work with Gavin Mitchell, who's a counseling um, 
who's a counselor there uh, and he's a phenomenal. So if you have any questions, definitely uh, reach out to him and Kelly Young for any tutoring services. But yeah, you will definitely, um, and as far as like community service projects, we do have the Office of Leadership and Civic Engagement. So they have plenty of opportunities there for you to um, practice service, yeah. Thank you, Jackie. Um, so there's another question as what are, uh, what student organizations are there and how can I get involved in them? Uh, Manny, can you um, tell us a little bit about the organizations that you are familiar with? Yeah, so there's a bunch of different student organizations you can get involved with. Um, Spartan Connect is one of the biggest resources anybody uses when it comes to student organizations. You can just sign into your UNC um, account and then you go to Spartan Connect and you could type in the littlest of arts, arts club or anything and you'll have maybe like 20 different clubs come up. Um, each of them has their own little specific theme or could have their own little, you know, whatever you want to look into. But as far as the student organizations that I've been involved with, I've been involved with our fraternity and sorority life. I've been involved with our first year experience and new student transitions. Of course, I've been involved with our admissions program with the Spartans Initiative um, and other programs like that. There's just so many clubs and Spartan Connect is the biggest resource we all use to find a club that we like. There's over a there's over hundred. So there's not, there, there's obviously something that you could find that interests you because there's so many options. And if I can um, chime in, so yeah, the student organizations are growing. It's actually, we have over 250 organizations at the moment. Um, and if there was an organization that you didn't see that UNCG has to offer, you can actually begin any club or organization as long as it falls within um, the policies and procedures from the campus activities office. And then in the office that I work in, intercultural engagement, I oversee our intercultural leadership council which also supports all of our diverse and multicultural clubs and organizations. And we provide an additional layer of support. We help um, plan all of the Heritage Month programs on campus. Um, so there really is um, a lot of opportunity at UNCG in terms of uh, clubs and orgs. Thank you guys. Um, and we had one of our um, committee members um, just give a little more in detail about the TRIO program. So it also provides individualized academic skills, instructions, academic and personal counseling and tutoring for free. Uh, when I was an alum, uh, an alumna, uh, I'm sorry, when I was a student, I am an alumna, when I was a student at UNCG, I remember um, going to get some of these services, especially the free tutoring. It was I can't tell you how great it was uh, being paired with someone else, another student who you can you know, easily talk to and connect with. Um, and they made it seem so easy uh, at times that you, it just kind of clicked. So you have these great, amazing tutors in their um, tutoring program and it's free for our students. So um, let's see. So this is for our chance mentors. How has being a mentor um, helped you overall in your leadership skills? Let's start with, um, let's start with Jackie. Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, I don't know, there's so much I can say, but when I'm like, when I got the chance to be a mentor, I'm thinking about, okay, like what, what is the ideal like mentor that like I want like or like like how do I want to represent myself because I'm I'm given the opportunity to make a huge impact on these students and I want to support them in any way I can so um it's what I did really was just kind of listen to the students and hear out what their needs were before I um did anything that I thought was like like the correct thing to do, you know? So I was mainly learning from the students that I was surrounded with and seeing how I can support them. Um, and yeah, that's really what I was doing. There wasn't like a specific way I was mentoring, but anytime I do get a chance to uh, to have a mentee and take them under my arms, I'm always thinking about like um, looking for them and like seeing what I can so like further support them with, but yeah. And that is what a mentor is supposed to do. <laughs> um, 
So Manny, um, tell us a little bit about your um, experience as a mentor, chance mentor. Um, my experience with, as a chance mentor, like Jackie said, I, when, when I first found out I was gonna be a mentor, I was so nervous. Um, my anxiety was like through the roof. I was like, man, I don't think I really wanna do this anymore. But as soon as that first week started, I think one of the biggest things that, you know, Chance contributed to my leadership skills is working with the team and being supportive with the team. You know, the, all the mentors and the staff and all the volunteers were just so supportive. So being a part of something like that, it showed me how to take that and then take it somewhere else with me as well as any other clubs and all the other organizations I'm a part of. I just remember, I remember being on Chance and being a part with 20 other mentors and all this faculty and staff, and we all just worked very well together and we were all very communicative with everything and very receptive. So I had to take, I took all that with me with all the leadership positions I've been involved with. Um, Miguel, can you tell us a little bit how it has impacted your leadership skills? Yes, yeah, so for me, I guess the main thing was learning how to collaborate and work with just like three different age groups because we first had to work together as mentors. So it was us as our current college student. And then we had to also be interacting with people that were younger than us. So there were high school students, but at the same time we had to communicate with people that were higher above us. So that was staff and faculty. So just learning how to, you know, transition between those three age groups was very exhausting at first, but then you learn how to communicate effectively. And I think that was one big skill and asset that I have learned through those first two years. And then the third year that I did it, so I was a team leader, which was a little bit more responsibility. So it just, you know, it keeps adding to your plate, but you learn as you go on the job. And I think that was one of the biggest um, positive outcomes of it was just learning how to communicate effectively with different people in different age groups. Thank you. I want to encourage our viewers to please keep those questions coming. They, these questions are great. You guys are doing a phenomenal job posing these questions to our um, uh, presenters. I, I, I am enjoying them and I enjoy listening to the responses and I'm learning a lot from them. Um, so please keep those questions coming. Um, Yaslin, can you tell us about, you know, you said that you hadn't been involved greatly with the chance, but you were in and out several times. Um, how has this helped you develop your leadership skills? Yeah, um, so with the chance program, I actually was a transfer student at UNCG. I'm still with my previous university. Um, you know, they didn't offer many resources in Spanish. So my parents never really got involved due to language barriers. Um, so then when I transferred to UNCG and found out that they were doing this program, I initially, I said like, I have to help out. I have to get involved because I know what a big impact it can have, you know? Um, so I, I like to stay involved just because I like to give back, but it also helps me learn. It helps me learn like, um, learn more about my campus because the campus is always growing, you know? Uh, Stacy shared, you know, we have over 250, was it 250 student organizations? There's always new resources. Um, so just getting a better understanding of the campus, getting a better understanding of the university, and then also, you know, uh, connecting with the future leaders. Thank you. Um, let's see, who has, who else? Sammy, you've been, um, you've been quiet. Tell us how this has impacted your uh, leadership skills being a mentor. Um, so since I was a camper during the chance program back in 2017, I was a really shy little girl, just like Celine, I'm an introvert. Um, and I felt that I was the only one going through my situation. And when I saw the mentors, actually, fun fact, one of my mentors was Miguel, which is really cool. Um, <laughs> but my looking up to him and seeing the way that he led our group and showed us that college is a possibility was just absolutely amazing. And so when I became a mentor and I saw how the kids looked up to me and how I am their role model, they see me and they see themselves. Um, that helped me understand the mindset of a leader. What a leader needs to do is to understand like the people and the group that they're trying to communicate with and understand their thoughts, their feelings, the way that they work and how, how they wanna achieve their goals. And I think that's very, very important. 
Thank you, Sammy. That is, those are some very wise words. Um, Celerino, let's wrap that up with you. Um, I personally think it's, um, it's a really great opportunity to be a mentor, just because I think it really can help us grow. We, we learn and grow together, you know, um, meeting mentors from different majors, uh, different age groups. It was just a really good way for us, like I said, to learn from each other. Um, you learn from people that might be staff, some alumni, um, and for me, it was just, it was just really bad. I was able to make really good connections. And like, um, like I said, we just really learn from each other. Um, we really get to work on um, many professional skills, like being able to talk properly. Um, like, you know, like being able to communicate with your, um, with your campers, um, but also being able to communicate with your fellow mentor, because um, usually what we do is to mentors take care of a group. Well, at least that's when um, it was when I was on it. Um, and it can really, I feel like also like the sessions that are meant for the um, campers can be really informational for us as well. We can learn a lot from them too. And so, yeah, I think it was just, it was, it's just such a great experience overall. For me, the, be the best blessing I got from it was the fact that I really felt like I made an impact in someone's life. Some of my campers were really just kind of there. Some campers were there just mainly for their parents. Not necessarily because they were really there for it, but once the camp was over, they really they came to me with their parents and they said thank you so much for being such a great mentor. I didn't even have plans to go to college, but now thanks to you, like I can see a possibility, and I can really feel like I can. For me, that was that was the best thing I could ask for. Just the fact that I saw such a huge, like the impact that I made on someone's life, and I was just so happy that um that he said that to me and my fellow mentor, like that he was really excited to go to school. You know, thanks to like just because like we were able to show him um the importance of education. Thank you, Salerino, for that. Um, we have some more questions coming through. Let's see. This is a really good one. How do you manage your money? What UNCG resources are uh, to help a student with financial responsibility, example, housing, tuition, scholarships, et cetera. Um, let's see, let's, let's begin with Yaslin. Did you have, uh, how did you manage your money when you were a student? Yeah, so when I was a student, I actually paid uh, for college on my own. Um, you know, my parents supported me in every way they could, but financially they weren't um, able to. So the biggest thing that I would recommend, because it's going to depend depending, um, you know, on your financial situation, is make connections with the UNCG, um, with the Office for Financial Aid. You know, they will be your best resource. It is okay to ask them questions. If you're not sure about things, go to them. Take full advantage of them. They are there to help you navigate what are our student loans? What are our grants? Figure out all of that. So ask questions, don't be afraid. The second thing is make sure to build connections with your department. Your department is gonna give you access to different research opportunities, internship opportunities that are paid. And that is so important. When I first started college, that's not something I did. And I was doing all this volunteer work until uh, one of my mentors like, hey, did you know you could get paid for it? Let me help you. And they were able to connect me with an internship that was paid. So, you know, uh, talk to the Office of uh, Financial Aid, talk to your department heads, your professors. And then third, uh, make sure to reach out to outside groups as well. So depending on your field, for example, I was in the Bryan School of Business. I made sure to build a relationship with the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce and later on I got an internship that way. Um, so, you know, if you have to work, um, some students, you just have to, that's the only way, that's okay. But just try to find work that lines up with your future career goals. Because, um, you know, whether it's completely related, for example, my first sales job, I worked at T-Mobile and I sold phones. You might think that doesn't help, but you know, later on in my career, it did help. It didn't matter that I was selling phones. What mattered was that I was building communication skills. Um, so definitely try to find jobs that line up with your future path. But you know, it is possible. Uh, don't try to plan everything at once. Take it step by step. 
and make sure to reach out to the universities because really uh, they are there to help you. They are there to help you navigate to take full advantage of it. I would like to move because of time, I want to move to the next question because I think this is very important. It says, I understand that most of you are first generation college students and alumni and I and I will be one as well. What are some challenges that I should expect? Um, is there any advice, oops, is there any advice you could share? Um, anyone want to raise their hand and shoot for this? Celerino, go ahead. Um, one of the things that um, Justin was really mentioning was the fact that you really need to know, I feel like the biggest challenge as a first generation student is not knowing anything. Um, for me, I didn't know anything regarding college like I mentioned before. So going to the undergraduate admissions office, going to financial aid can really help you understand everything. Because for me, well, one of the biggest concerns for me was the money part, you know, I had no idea how I worked. Um, I thought that, you know, if if the tuition um, estimate was $20,000 that I thought I had to pay $20,000 there and then, you know, like all together at once. That's not how it works. Usually um, whatever tuition a university is charging for is to, during the semesters, you know, and there's such things as payment, plan, payment plans, um, there's loans in case you don't have money. There's different ways to find money and different ways to work at, you know, it's, there's not just one way. And for me, that was probably the biggest thing and that really scared me when I was applying to colleges just because I was like where am I going to get all this money just because like my parents support me and everything but like they wouldn't be able to support me with that much money when it came financially so I think just really like the biggest challenge is not knowing so I would definitely advise everyone to really please ask questions and really get yourself informed because it can be a brief like you can have such a good experience if you have the resources if you have the information needed Thank you, Celerino. I also want to mention there is the UNCG uh, Guarantee Scholar Program here. So this uh, program, um, you may get a full scholarship, full, I'm sorry, full ride scholarship. Um, our one of our uh, committee members, Tai Shea, um, she is part of that. Actually, she was the first Guarantee Scholar, uh, if I may add. Uh, so she knows the ins and outs of this program. You are welcome to reach out to Tai Shea about this program. If you wanna know more, how can you apply? When's the deadlines um, or how to get to that, all that information, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to give you more information about the uh, UNCG Guarantee Scholar. Um, and they also provide financial, uh, financial literacy, tuition assistance and much more. So, um, Let's see. Well, Sammy, I know that you wanted to, you know, chime in on the last um, question. We have a couple of minutes. Would you like to add on to anything Celerino um, said? I think, yeah. So I think one of the biggest challenges for me personally um, was receiving all of that information and being so overwhelmed with all of it and kind of, you know, putting it in the back pocket, getting those papers and just like, you know, not knowing what to do with them. And I think one of the biggest challenges is to push yourself. These resources are here for you and they're here to help you. Um, you know, you have these four years and you're not gonna go through it alone. There's tons of people, I mean, here to help you step by step. And I think it's just putting that fear aside and knowing that you're not alone. So you gotta be strong. <laughs> Thank you guys. Well, everyone, I believe this will be wrap. We will be wrapping this up. Um, I want to thank every single one of you guys for participating in our panel um, and, you know, joining us, taking the time out of your evening to join us. I can't thank you enough. Um, we appreciate all of your support and your feedback that you've provided for our viewers. Uh, for those of you who uh, are tuned in, uh, please be on the lookout for an email with a survey. If you fill it out, then you will be entered into a contest to receive UNCG swag. Our next virtual chance session will be August 6th, and it is titled How to Find Your Way Here. Yeah, I'm sorry, How to Find Your Way Here 
which will include information from admissions, financial aid, and virtual campus tour. Uh, so see you next time and good night, everyone. Muchas gracias.